Yeah, I bet. I mean, they're seeing all of their hard work to build their communities and go through the correct legal process to get here or having been here for generations now get wiped out by just a complete open border policy. That's got to suck, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, kind of, it's almost like you went to uh, school and even graduate school and paid for all your shit and now all these fucking losers with liberal arts degrees are begging to get their fucking shit paid for. Kind of, probably kind of feels like that, right? Yeah. Like, Isn't that happening? Yes. Well, there, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it'll actually happen. I think Biden, anytime they get in too much trouble, they float like, hey, we're, actually, we're seriously discussing this. But yeah. they, they have, there's no fucking way. Yeah. Like, they're going to get hammered in November this year regardless. If they did that, it would be way worse. You think they are? I have, I have no idea about politics. Yeah. But... It's going to be rough. I mean, so one of the inflection points, as uh, Lindsay likes to call it, <clears throat> is the groomer shit with kids, mm -hmm. right? So we saw it in Virginia, and it wasn't even about the sexuality part. It was just about the race part, the CRT part, with uh, uh, Youngkin winning um, a, a race that he had no business winning. And I don't mean he's not qualified for it. I mean, that's a pretty solidly blue area. Um, man. I think, it's, I think it was the kids. I think a lot of these woke white ladies are unwoking really fast because people are fucking with their kids mm -hmm. and th that's probably why people like buck and others are so fucking pissed off about getting lumped in with all these dumb dumbs because <laughs> that's the one that's literally the one place you can't go yeah of, of all the things you might try to do uh uh you come after people's kids and you activate fucking all these crazy soccer mom bulldog people that are they, they don't give a fuck about you They'll fight you in the parking lot. You know what I mean? It's just crazy shit. It's, why would you pick a fight with them? You had them. Why, why now? It doesn't make sense to me. Well, I think it's a lot of the normies who, uh, I love normies. Mm. They have, they, they're living life. They have jobs. They are providing for their kids. But they're, they're becoming aware of everything that's going on. And I just talked to two parents in a Grapevine Colleyville School District here in Texas. They have an election happening right now. I'll mention that if anyone happens to be there. It's a school board election. And these parents are motivated. They're organized. They have put together a whole packet of not just the CRT in the classroom, in the teacher trainings, explicitly mm. called CRT in the teacher trainings, yeah. but also the sexually explicit material that's mm. in the classroom, material that's so explicit they can't even go to, board, they can't even go to um, school board meetings and read from it. They get told it's inappropriate to, to read, but, oh, but it's okay for my ninth grader to read that and have to do a report on it as part of the enforced curriculum. So I think it's a lot of grassroots normie parents who are waking up and I, I don't pay much attention I guess to national politics anymore but I, I think these local elections are really important yeah for sure I mean the local elections are always the most important in my opinion uh, it seems like there are levels like you were saying to this ideology like like Dante's Inferno or some shit yeah. you know what I mean uh, and there's some gravity to it. Like some people dabble in it a little bit. I think the the wealthy people that are people on Twitter that just put shit in their bio, they're just dab. Like a, a a man who is clearly a man who has no fucking gender dysphoria, or whatever the fuck, and still has he him in his fucking pro profile. Who is that for? Mm -hmm. What what is that exactly? What what's your intent or motivation with that? Yeah. What's your intent or motivation with putting? a fucking yellow flower or a Ukrainian flag and you're like, what is that? What, what are you accomplishing exactly except for making you feel better? Mm -hmm. And isn't that kind of pathetic? You know what I mean? But anyways, <clears throat> people dabble. They put Ukrainian flags in their bio. Uh, there are people who back the actions up, donating to charity or showing up to protests or activism in the, in the voting uh, arena, whatever that happens to be. <clears throat> then there are people who riot, people who say crazy things. Uh, and of course, there's the profiteers like Abraham X. Kennedy and people like that. To me, it seems like you get sucked further into the madness. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, more, the more time goes on, maybe. And I think it happens to a lot of people without them really understanding how they got. Like you, yes. it, it's like uh, mission creep. Like you fuck all of a sudden wake up and you're like, wait, what? The, who, who are these people that I'm surrounded by now? Yeah. I wonder, for your, from your perspective, it sounds like you kind of just dug your way out. But how does the broader culture in America 
reach down and give these people a hand out of this shit? Or is that uh, impossible? <laughs> I, that's why I think things have to get really dark because on an individual level, almost every person I've talked to who's left social justice or any other kind of cult, they had to have a, like a personal breakdown mm. of sorts because... So it's like an addict. Like you can't yes. be helped until you're fucking And so bottom. the country has to do that because I had to get to a place where... Again, talking about how hard it is to leave, people built their whole identity on this belief system. And it's like, uh, th there's this guy named uh, George Lakoff. He wrote a book called Don't Think of an Elephant. And it, it was, I read this when I was a leftist. He wrote it for leftists to try and explain why conservatives can disregard facts that don't fit their house of belief, right? Mm -hmm. And he, his one blind spot was that it applies to the left too. Like, and, and especially now it applies to the left. And so if... If they've built their whole, if you think of a belief system like a house, you've built your whole house of belief. Mm. Somebody gives you a fact that doesn't fit your architecture, you're just going to get rid of it. And what has to happen is your whole belief system has to be raised to the ground. Mm. And that's hard for people because it's like they feel like they're losing everything. Right. And, and the people I know who've left, a lot of times it's coincided with, with some other um, uh, breakdown in their life. I mean, I was going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. um, I was being confronted with all this stuff I didn't know was happening. We reached an acceleration point in history and things looked really dark. I saw people in my social justice echo chamber who were celebrating that sniper in mm. Dallas who killed the cops at the Black mm. Lives Matter rally, celebrating that. Yeah. That was a wake-up call for me. Mm. I saw things I didn't, I didn't know that <laughs> I was a part of that. And so it, it's a long process to break down your whole belief system. It didn't happen overnight. Yeah. And, and so I think, yeah, on a large scale, what, is, what has to happen culturally, we have to break down, unfortunately. I know a lot of people who are like estranged from family members mm -hmm. and have lost friends over the last, particularly since 2016, right? Since like yeah. August of 2016, when Trump became serious. Um, <coughs> uh, how, how do you get that back? If you can, right? It's it again. It's like a cult, uh, and and people contact me a lot because of the show I do about how do I reach my daughter, mm. my brother, my even spouses who are separating over ideology, and there's no there's no book list I can give you. There's nothing you can't reach people who are in a cult with facts. You right. you need to have the facts on your side, but if you're going to reach them, it has to be through the heart. Mm. I know that sounds so cheesy, but it's the truth. It's the emotion. The thing that started to wake me up was, like I said, going in that rabbit hole of YouTube videos of, of people being, Trump voters being assaulted, and I, it left me in tears. Yeah. I, I didn't know anything that was happening. And that emotional confrontation with what was going on is sort of that first crack I had in my foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this, because I've sometimes asked people, give me your advice, because people are always asking me for advice. I talked to this one young guy, younger, much younger than me, he went through woke. He got into it at college. He became estranged from his dad. He called his dad white supremacist, all kinds of things. This was for years. And he said, my dad never stopped loving me. Mm. Like, I'm sorry, it's making me emotional. <laughs> but he said he never stopped loving me. He, he, would con he would argue with me and tell me why he thought I was wrong. But, um, but he never cut me off, even though I cut him off. Right. And he said, when I finally did have that crack in my foundation of my beliefs later I remembered I could see how he had stayed open to me that whole time yeah. and he went back and mended that relationship yeah that's and, good yeah I and mean, it means dad didn't dad's identity wasn't his belief system yes right his yeah. his identity was I'm dad yeah which again it comes back to what you value as a human being yeah and I think like in sports if you stop hitting jump shots or you, you keep swinging and missing, you go back to fundamentals. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You shoot free throws or hit off the tee, typically. That's how an athlete I don't know what any of that it. means, but I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> this is a sports reference. <laughs> I, I can't think of any non-sports references that okay. would make sense. There. <laughs> but, yeah, you go whenever, you're, whenever your uh, performance sucks, it's a really good idea to go back to fundamentals. That's why Peterson always says, identify one thing about yourself that you're doing wrong and then figure out a way you can do it better yes. or right. You know, I mean, that's a really important step for people. <clears throat> and in sociology, in my opinion, and, and that's, that's a behavioral thing, but just in the way that your identity works and how you feel about who you are as a person, going back to fundamentals is a really good idea for people. What is yeah. it that I actually value? And do the things I believe and the things I'm doing reflect my values? I, that, that seems like a pretty easy... 
Like you can certainly delude yourself in that process quite a bit, but man, it, it seems like a better option than just assuming you're correct yes. and doubling down on that yeah. shit. You know what I mean? That's fucking stupid. Like who am I <clears throat> and what do I believe? That happened mm. to me. I went way down to the, the first thing I knew, because I was like, I don't even know who I am anymore mm. or what I believe about anything. I was like, well, I like dogs. That's my first thing. I was mm-hmm. like, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And then, and my, my whole identity when you're in a, the, the social justice cult anyway, your whole identity, is, they've convinced you, you've convinced yourself. It's all wrapped up in your, oh, your race and your sex and sexuality and all that stuff. That's bullshit. Well, they, None of that is, means anything. If you can convince someone that there is an ex- existential threat, they will do anything like crazy shit to stop it from happening like climate alarmism or if you make everything about race or, or sexuality or whatever the fuck, right? If you convince them that there's some kind of existential threat to the things that they value, the democracy, not that we are one, right? We're a right. fucking republic, but let's just say that that was accurate. People value the comforts they have in life. 